Thank you very much. Uh, welcome to this uh, seminar about the Symbiosi Tra Trajectorias project, which is a scientific synthesis approach for public health problems in the Brazilian Amazon. We're delighted to be joined today by four experts who will explain to us their work in compiling a unique database for the Amazon region. Um, we will first hear from Dr. Claudio Cordeso, who is a senior researcher in public health at the Oswaldo Cruz Foundation in Fiocruz. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, you all. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for the invitation to, to be here and present this work. And I'm here with um, three of my colleagues from my team. Ana Claudia Horato, Ana Paula da Lasta e Raquel Lana, that's from there, but also <laughs> participated in this project. And uh, so the idea here is to uh, go through the, the rationale, the introduction of this project, and then I'll leave for the, the other uh, members of the team to present the results. So, um, this project is a scientific synthesis project, so it's good to start talking about this. Uh, there is this uh, effort in the last 20 years around the world to create environments that um, uh, help disciplines, scientific disciplines, to talk to each other and to exchange knowledge and create new knowledge seeking uh, answers to complex problems. We are aware that uh, we have many uh, challenges that we need to face, uh, climate change, uh, uh, biodiversity loss, uh, many problems of uh, poverty, economic uh, development of the world, many uh, challenges. And we need to sit down together and to find solutions and to think about this together, putting together all this knowledge. And uh, so uh, there are many centers uh, of knowledge synthesis around the world. And this is an international synthesis consortium. And here we have like, uh, we show, I show some of examples. So it's really interesting to participate in this type of uh, projects, good for um, students and for people of all expertise. And Brazil uh, started its first synthesis center in 2018. This is the Symbiosis, the name of this, the synthesis center. And we uh, participated in this effort. And next. Uh, and but before I go into our uh, work, uh, I'd like to show this uh, uh, slide that's like a summary of uh, what a synthesis, scientific synthesis project looks like. So basically we have like together different uh, groups from different disciplines, for example, ecology, economy, and uh, earth sciences, politics. We sit uh, down together in these groups, and we uh, try to find ways to harmonize concepts, uh, to create concepts that uh, uh, make sense in all these disciplines. We seek to integrate data, to aggregate data across the disciplines, integrate methodologies in order to create new concepts, new uh, data sets in order to produce new knowledge. So. And so that's what we did. So we have a, a group that uh, uh, accepted this challenge. So these are biologists, ecologists, social scientists, geographers, economists, epidemiologists uh, from all different regions of Brazil with different uh, backgrounds, different uh, uh, age groups, all the, all, the, all the diversity that we could um, um, find. And uh, we sit down together to try to answer uh, a big problem that uh, uh, is um, important for all of us. Next. And this is about the Amazon region. And the Amazon region is uh, in the, the main topic 
around the world, in many uh, communities, in many discussions, in many forums. So there is no uh, doubt that the, the maintenance of the ecosystem services of the Amazon region is fundamental for the uh, planetary health. But uh, I'd like to introduce this from a, new, a, new, a different perspective and think about the Amazon, not so much from the perspective of climate change per se, but as one of our main reservoirs of uh, fresh water. And uh, I like a lot this uh, figure here on the left that shows the, the Earth. We have this image of the Earth as like a big blue planet full of water, but this is uh, like a, a false image. If we put all the water in a single bubble, uh, all the water of the world in a single bubble, including uh, all types of states like a solid, vapor, and uh, liquid, this would be this big drop of water here in the top of the American, uh, North American. But if we look at the amount of liquid water, what in liquid stage is this is a smaller uh, circle here, this smaller bubble. And if we look at the fresh water in rivers and lakes, it is this tiny little drop here that we can hardly see. And 20% of this tiny little drop is in the Amazon region. And uh, so this is main, the, the Amazon region is like a, this huge lake <laughs> with, with, that's so flat that the rivers cannot go straight. The, the water goes in circles and that's why we have all this very wet and these huge reservoirs. Next. And but this is not a, an empty space like a, with just forest. We have or just biodiversity. We have 24 million people living in this region only in Brazil. If we think about the whole Amazon and the other countries, about 40 million people. And the people, these people live very closely related with the water. They use the water for transportation, for food, uh, it's their culture, their traditions, everything is related to the water, the rivers, and, and, and but they, they can live like in small cities, in large cities, in, in towns, in rural areas, in the forest, as indigenous people, all these people, and we need to, in order to keep the forest, we need to, to make these people healthy and happy there in order to keep this environment healthy. Next. And uh, uh, it is not just about the Amazon, because the Amazon region, we, we know that the, the, the forest there and all this environment is responsible for the maintenance of climate and water that provides water for the whole continent. So it's not just for this con this region, but the whole con the whole continent, even the whole world, is affected by the the deforestation and what happens in the Amazon. Next. So, uh, but we know that deforestation is going is increasing very fast in this region, in, especially in the the last years. And most of this uh, deforestation is due to the um, forest removal for the implementation of these uh, uh, large plantations or uh, cattle farming. And this is for exportation. And the main uh, mentality that uh, uh, provides like arguments for this, uh, this uh, uh, process is the idea that development means removal of the forest, that development by removing the forest brings richness and health, while, and wealth and health, while the, the preview, the forest, is a source of poverty and disease. That's the mindset that we keep listening and think about this uh, like uh, for years and decades, and that the, the idea that uh, provides the justification for this removal of the forest. However, next, uh, if we want to keep the forest and keep the, the, the planetary um, services that the forest provides, we need to see and find ways to see, detect and uh, value the richness and the health that is associated with the forest. So we need to find a balance between these different uh, ways of living, these different land uses and land covers. 
And this is done, it, the, the main uh, challenge is that the biodiversity in one, in, on the left, in order to live in this environment, we need to see biodiversity as a resource, biodiversity as something to be valued. And on the other hand, when we look at the, the soybean production and the cattle farming, this big cattle farming, they are not really um, valuing the, the biodiversity. They are really valuing the land. They just want a big plot to, to do this, all these plantations. They're not paying attention. They're not valuing the, the forest. Next. So uh, we decide to, to put uh, all these uh, um, ideas together and our main theoretical framework is that uh, uh, in order to for the economy to uh, value the forest we need to integrate economy with ecology we need to s introduce ecological concepts within the economy uh, uh, disciplines and need to think about economy in the ecological disciplines that's the way we can uh, communicate and find solutions and as epidemiologists is that in my case <laughs> uh, i need to think about uh, health and think about that uh, most of the the problems faced in this community by these communities in terms of diseases they emerge from this interaction between economy and ecology because the individuals are exposed to diseases in a way that's mediated by the ecology and mediated by the economy next so we need to harmonize in order to communicate to think about this in an integrated way economy epidemiology and uh, ecology you need to harmonize concepts and create a theoretical framework so that we can discuss this together. And this is easy to say, but very difficult to implement. <laughs> and uh, so uh, we start here with a, a, a framework that is very interesting framework that is presented by an economist from the Amazon region, that's uh, Professor Francisco Costa. And he he's, uh, provides a very uh, interesting framework that he classifies the municipalities of the Amazon region in terms of the type of economy, rural economy that they rely on. So they, he, he classifies the economic uh, trajectories, the economy of the, 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 these places in terms of the type of um, uh, arrangements, like a type of, uh, if this is a, a, a family-based economy, or if it's a, like a, a big industry economy, if it's based on um, biodiversity crops from uh, that use the biodiversity or agroforest, or if it's like a, a, a based on like a, a temporary crops and that homogenize that remove the forest. What these different uh, economies value and the way this, uh, the type of economy will be uh, associated with different uh, type of life, different type of uh, 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 contact with the biodiversity and different exposure to diseases as well. So the, um, we, in, within this project, we, we seek to integrate this, uh, um, think about these uh, trajectories that these municipalities follow that uh, these are uh, uh, economic trajectories if, and try and seek to link this with uh, environmental impacts, environmental features, as well as, uh, as uh, health indices. And uh, the goal is to create a data set, a big repository of indicators that allow us to discuss these different things uh, together. And using these data sets, we can then think about analysis, scenario analysis of the impact of different trajectories, different uh, policies on the on the both of the biodiversity and health, uh, uh, human health uh, issues in the Amazon. So uh, we spent like the last like a few years <laughs> organizing this data set. It was published uh, this year, and uh, this data set uh, is uh, basically a set of uh, 36 indicators for this region, and they are constructed in a way that harmonize these different, uh, different dimensions. Next. 
So um, this data set has like two um, time stamps, like two time stamps. One is like uh, around, is about 2007 and the other one 2017. These are the dates of the agrarian censuses in Brazil. So this is a moment where we can have information about the rural economies. And so we uh, associated this rural economy with uh, uh, environmental impact like uh, habitat loss, land use, land cover, um, um, climate anomalies. And we also associated this rural uh, economy indicators with like poverty indices and this allow us to connect to link to discuss these different dimensions uh, in, a, in, a, in a integrated way next so i will ask raquel to continue this presentation <laughs> so i will try to talk a little bit about the epidemiological dimension of the indicators we produce it so we organized a data set for Chagas disease, cutaneous and visceral leishmaniasis, dengue, malaria falciparum, malaria vivax, and malaria vivax plus falciparum, that's when a co-infection happened. So um, those data come from SINAN. SINAN is the national health database from Brazil. But only CVEP ma malaria it comes from the CVEP, it's uh, another database. The, in, this, in this situation, we have to request, but from SINA, the data is open. You know, you can just go there and find the data. Uh, the data here was organized uh, in two uh, periods, like we collected data from 2004 to 2008 and, and uh, accumulated, did an accumulation of this, these cases here, and the same for the 2015 to 2019. This is organized by municipality, and for the disease except dengue, we organize it by rural and urban zones. Dengue, it's not uh, possible because the data is don't like uh, total cases. And we have um, the number of cases and also an incidence rate done uh, with the, the sum of the cases divided by the population in the middle of the the period multiplied by five years and also here multiplied by a uh, hundred thousand that is um, a, a pattern to calculate incidence um, so this is just a few examples of the maps and the indicators you can find in our repository uh, for malaria uh, here we have rural malaria, urban malaria. Just uh, to note that the magnitude is different. So what happened for malaria is uh, a geographical reduction and also a reduction of number of cases too, of incidents too. Um, but it's still a uh, high incidence in hotspots like here in the northwesternmost place in Brazil and here too, here too, uh, in rural places um, and urban places, actually the same, but the, the number of cases, you know, reduced a little bit. Here in this period is not considered an uh, epidemic years. We have in our paper a supplementary file and in this file it's possible to find a table. In this table you put there all of the years and each state that occurred a uh, epidemic for the whole disease we, we, we organized here. So it's possible to check there. Uh, here is for Chagas disease, uh, it's the same, the magnitude is different, but about Chagas, what we can see is a 
increase in, in the, the geographical space that you know we can find cases. And one important thing is we have um, a, a hotspot of cases in the extreme places in Amazon region, here in Pará state, here in Ax state. Here is the same hotspot, a very important hotspot for malaria too. And an, another important thing to note about the Chagas is uh, the, the chain, the, the, the pattern of transmission changed a little bit, you know, in the 10, 15 years, in the last 10, 15 years, around 50 years, um, the transmission was more by vector, the barber, but now uh, it's more about oral transmission because of food contamination. And here is just an uh, overview about dengue pro progression over the years in Amazon region. So we can see that in the beginning of the, the our study period, we have more dengue in the transition areas from the Amazon biome and the others biomes in Brazil, more in urban places. But year by year, the dengue, you know, was spreading and introducing to the other regions here. And as we can see, Acre is the best example for me. We can see clearly how dengue was introduced in this area. Acre was the last state in Brazil that uh, register a dengue uh, introduce, introduction. And so in Brazil, in the other places, almost all the other places, dengue start to be introduced like more than 10 years, 15 years before Acre. And it's important to say that uh, the first time the mosquito Aedes aegypti, the dengue trans trans vector was identified here was in Rio Branco. Rio Branco is the capital of Acre. In 2000, no, 2000, no, 1995. And after five years, six years, the first epidemic was registered in Rio Branco. And after 13 years, the first epidemic was registered here in Cruzeiro do Sul, you know. So this is was, uh, modulated by a uh, transportation infrastructure. So we can also see well how this happened to access this paper that I did in my PhD. It's a, a good example to understand how the dengue was introduced in the Amazon because it followed you know, a, a similar pattern. Um, yeah, and here we can still many dengue incidents in the borders, in the, the borders of the other biomes, more urban place too. Um, so about the epidemi epidemiological dimensions, uh, another thing I would like to say is we have still to innovate in this type of indicators because if you would like to study the co-occurrence of disease, if the disease share patterns, you know, it's quite hard because of the magnitude of the disease and for diseases like malaria, dengue, chagas, leishmaniasis, Depends the disease, the what we consider an epidemic is different. You know, the the numbers is different, the magnitude is different. Sometimes you have to to do this type of comparison. In our first paper that Claudia showed, we did something quite different here. But here the idea is just to organize the data, harmonize the data, and have the cases and also the incidence is one of the epidemiological indicator. But from cases, we can do many other different types of indicators. So from my part, that's it. Now is Ana Paula. Uh, <clears throat> for the, so I will uh, talk about the socioeconomic uh, dimension and uh, in our data set, uh, this dimension contains population data and uh, um, multidimensional poverty index, the MPI, uh, which was uh, developed specifically for the Amazon region. Both data, population and the uh, MPI, uh, MPI, MPI, were calculated by place, rural. Uh, 
uh, and urban. Uh, from the 2010 uh, demographic census. Uh, next, uh, Raquel. Uh, so I will focus on the MPI here. And uh, the MPI measures a combination of deprivations of uh, each household. And here the MPI was adjusted for the Amazon uh, from within the Amazon itself. The MPI included three dimensions, health, education, and the living conditions. And the living conditions dimension uh, was divided uh, into two sub-dimensions. Uh, the first one is housing and collective services, and the second uh, uh, is work and private uh, consumer goods. Uh, the unit for measuring the multidimensional poverty is the household. Uh, and for each dimension, uh, uh, it, uh, the indicators uh, came from the microdata, from the demographic census, and the, the, uh, the indicators were selected by a broad and, uh, and in this interdisciplinary group of specialists of the trajectories project. And uh, uh, next, uh, Raquel. And here, uh, the what anterior, Raquel. Mm. Okay. And here uh, we summarize the, all the indicators and the indicators each in dimension. And some of the, uh, indica of the indicators that we propose uh, are uh, scaling of adults and scaling of children for the education dimension, death of newborn and early death for um, health dimension, uh, quality of house construction, uh, energy and the water supply, house, uh, house size and car or motorcycle for private use uh, for the living uh, conditions uh, dimensions. Each household receive a uh, score one when uh, if they met the, uh, the criteria for deprivation or zero otherwise. And each, indica uh, each indicator receive a weight, uh, as shown here in the table. And uh, a household uh, is multidimensionally uh, poor uh, when its deprivation score is greater than 25%. Next. And then we calculate the MPI at municipal level. And the MPI is a combination of the poverty incidence the age index and the poverty intensity date, uh, the A index. Uh, the poverty incidence is the proportion of the households in a multidimensional poverty condition. There is uh, the proportion of poor. And the poverty intensity is uh, the average household deprivation score that uh, there is uh, how poor these households are. And uh, uh, we have also the contribution, uh, contribution of uh, uh, each dimension in our data set. Uh, next. And uh, here we have some, some results, some maps uh, with the poverty incidence and the poverty intensity for 2010. Uh, and the maps show a uh, deviation of this index in relation to average for the Amazon region. And uh, it's represented the higher the index uh, means the more widespread are uh, the population's needs and the poverty, the next. And here we have the urban and the rural MPE for uh, 2010. And uh, also, uh, uh, once again, uh, the, the map show the higher the index, the more widespread uh, are the population's needs in multiple uh, dimensions. All these indicators uh, are uh, in our data set, and uh, that is all about the, this part. Uh, it's Anna. Hi, thank you. So I will present the environmental indicators. 
uh, we developed these indicators divided in different subdimensions. The first one, the uh, habitat loss, has indicators related to deforestation, forest degradation, fires, and vegetation fragmentation. Next. Uh, the land use and land cover subdimension has indicators uh, about the remaining forest, secondary vegetation, pastures, crop, mining, and urban areas. Next, please. The transportation networks that uh, has indicators related to uh, road density, waterways density, and the number of ports. Next. And the climatic anomalies subdimensions has indicators related to positive and negative precipitation and positive temperature. So these indicators, uh, back please, these indicators were, uh, were calculated uh, for, for different uh, periods, uh, mainly because of the availability of data for each one. And, uh, but we consider uh, to keep the two main uh, time frame steps uh, around the, the years of 2006 and 2017. Please, next. So here I will present some examples of these indicators. The first one, the percentage of accumulated clear cut deforestation area that was calculated for just, uh, these two periods from 2000 2006 and 2010 2016. Here we can observe the difference of the, the deforestation, accumulated deforestation in these two periods when the second period uh, have a um, uh, lower concentration of deforestation and it is a result of the application of public policies in the period to combat deforestation in the region. Next, please. Uh, here, uh, the, indicator, the indicator related to the percentage of burned area and uh, that was calculated to also uh, for two periods. And here, like deforestation, the fires, uh, forest fires, are mainly concentrated in the region of the arc of deforestation, a region of uh, a history of intention occupation of uh, human population uh, over the forest. Next, please. Here are the indicators uh, related that to crop areas. And here it's possible to observe the expansion of these activities uh, between the two periods. In the first period, the uh, crop areas are mainly concentrated in the state of Mato Grosso, but in the uh, second period, we can observe an uh, expansion of these activities along the other states. Next, please. And here, the indicators related to mining activities. Here, uh, we are talking about the industrial and artisanal mining, and that was calculated for two periods. And here, we also can see an uh, advancement of mining activities uh, when we compare the two periods. And we can... Uh, observe the municipalities on uh, where this activity is more intensive and uh, mining is a, 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 a negative threat, a social environmental threat in the region with uh, several consequences that impact environment and people of the region. Next, please. Here, uh, the indicator, um, related to climatic anomalies, uh, that is the negative precipitation anomalies. This indicator refers to the occurrence of anomalous negative precipitation events in the municipalities. And it that's mean 
that in these municipalities, the precipitation observed in the 10, period, uh, 10 years period was lower than the historic average. So uh, here we can observe too that the municipalities where the lower precipitation uh, occurred in the region of the arc of deforestation, like of uh, the uh, deforestation, like the, the fires. And so this region represent an important region to, to pay attention because of the environmental disturbances and now because of the climatic anomalies. Please. Uh, here, the indicator related to the subdimension transport network. Uh, this indicator is uh, about the road density, and it was calculated to, for two periods. And here also it's possible to observe the expansion of the uh, road network uh, between the periods. And we also observe the main uh, density of roads in the region of the arc of deforestation. Please, next. And finally, the subdimension related to land use and land cover. Uh, here we have the indicators of vegetation cover. The first one, the percentage of remaining forest uh, by 2017. And the second one, the percentage of secondary vegetation by 2017. Here you can observe the uh, special patterns of distribution of vegetation in the municipalities along the region. Next, please. So uh, since we have a theoretic framework and a rich set of indicators, now we can uh, advance for this stage of integrated analysis to uh, associate the three dimensions uh, in, in our project. Next, please. So here, uh, our goal is to answer uh, the following question. How different economic systems influence the environment and the patterns of disease occurrence? So in this approach, we developed a principal component analysis to uh, explore the environment, environmental profile of the municipalities. And we found uh, that the uh, dimension one represents a dimension of intensity of use, this axis. And the main variables contributing to this dimension are forest degradation, deforestation, forest car area, negative precipitation anomaly, pastures and fires. Uh, the municipalities with a higher uh, intensity of use are the municipalities represented in the map by the color red. So, Ana? Ana, are you, you are mute. Sorry, can you listen to me now? Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, so when we correlate this dimension with the occurrence of diseases, we found a strong association with malaria, leptospirosis, cutaneous leishmaniasis, tuberculosis, and Chagas disease. Next, please. Regarding the dimension two, we observe that this dimension is represented mainly by the intensity of environmental trend. And this dimension, the variables that most contribute are deforestation, forest degradation, forest car area, the presence of roads and pastures. And the, the municipalities uh, with higher environmental trends are represented in the map by the color blue. 
And when we uh, correlate this dimension with the occurrence of diseases, we uh, found a moderately association with visceral leishmaniasis and herbivirosis like dengue, chikungunya, and Zika. Next, please. So with this approach, we propose a more integrated and consistent narrative to describe the scenarios that impact the ecosystem and human health in the Amazon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you, Hakel. Thank you, Ana Paula. Thank you, Ana Claudia. That was a wonderful talk. Um, so interesting. Uh, does anyone have any questions, either in the room or online? Go ahead, Zoe. Uh, I was curious why the um, time periods for the epidemiologist calls um, in Greece were chosen. Yeah, I forgot to mention it. <laughs> yeah, we, we chose that period because based on the agricultural census, you know, that it's 2007, 2017. So we decided to have um, in the middle all of those and take more years around and, you know, do the accumulation and after calculate incidence or using the population in the region. So yeah. just to make sure there's alignment between yeah. the different... Yeah, okay. yeah, because of the, the census. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, please. Just a curiosity, which are the next steps after you told the harmonized data set that we're doing to media review? Yeah, uh, Anna um, showed us, you know, the analysis we start to do about, you know, to explore with a PTA. But we are also developing um, models, more complex models, to understand well this, um, this how, how you know the diseases share patterns, how the environmental and economic is and other indicators can influence the disease. Yeah, but it's in, it's in progress now. Yeah, hope it soon have the paper to shape. Also deleted. <laughs> I have a question. A uh, very nice call. Um, I didn't understand how you integrated the economic systems that you mentioned in the beginning. You mentioned another researcher that divided the Amazon region in different like uh, types of economic, like uh, big, big. Uh, farms and like this thing and then you went to talk on about the these indicators of, of deforestation and this is and then you related this to using the PCA with the this, the incidence of, of different diseases. I understood this part but how did you integrate this eco economic plastic I didn't understand how how you integrated this this is for the experts. <laughs> Claudia or, or Anna Paula, you are more into this. I'm sorry, but could you summarize because I couldn't hear well? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Would you like me to try? Do you want me to try? I think the question was just related to how you integrated the economic uh, categories that you presented at the beginning, I think, by was it Patricia Costa? just how they were integ integrated into the analysis, the economic uh, classes or trajectories. Okay, um, well, uh, for now, we are, most of the effort was to organize this data set, although the analysis is being still uh, under development, but uh, in our preliminary analysis show uh, um, a relationship between the economic trajectories and these uh, uh, indices. But most of all, what's important, that the main uh, interpretation that we have so far is that the more than the comparison between places, 
what we see is that the political uh, the policies that were implemented during the the, the early um, between 20, 2000 2010 the the social securities and all this uh, bolsa familia all these policies were very important to reduce poverty in the amazon so in that is like a, a we can see this uh, in all areas of the Amazon, independently of the type of uh, uh, economy, rural economy there. And that means that um, it's possible to leverage the, the economic, uh, or the, the, the well-being of the population. We don't need to, uh, we can still have a good, um, um, we can obtain uh, a good well-being for the population. Uh, if, with the forest. So I, I think that's the main result that we, we observe in this uh, data set. And, that, and this is only possible if we uh, take into consideration other uh, aspects of life that's not restricted to income or to restricted to schooling. If we combine, we integrate uh, all uh, different aspects of life in these indices, we can have a more uh, broad, a more descriptive uh, uh, image representation of the way of life in these regions. So, so far, that's our main uh, result. Uh, but uh, yeah, but we need to to move forward and see how we can uh, use this in terms of policies. And just to 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 complement uh, what was said before. Uh, one of their main goals is to uh, propose new indices for uh, monitoring the health and the wealth of the, the region. And this could be applied to other regions as well. But uh, for this region that's very vulnerable and very sensitive, we need to uh, develop new indicators so that we can uh, define what we, we with what's what is a good development policy and what is not a good development policy for this region. So if we can propose these new indicators that are much more uh, rich in this the, than traditional ones, we can um, we can discuss policies in a more uh structured in a more informed way so that's the main goal so far is to we are trying now to uh propose in this large forums using these measures of environmental health uh, status and, and economics and uh, status every uh, using all these indicators in, in decision making so Any other questions? I have one more. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious how the current political situation um, in the Brazilian Congress might impact the impact of your work generally. Do you see that as a potential threat to the work that you're doing on this project? In my personal view, yes. And I think with my colleagues too. When we saw everything start to happen, you know, we just started talking about this because this is our work team. This is all of, we are trying to defend, you know, the, to think the good politics and that keep the forest. Uh, how can I say impaired? Keep the forest <laughs> yeah. and also uh, uh, improve the strategies of the economic development, but you know, uh, uh, also, uh, how can I say, um, uh, integrate all of these, you know, the Amazon, but people and development and what they are doing now is completely, for me, it's quite complicated and insane. So we are trying to do things, um, you know, on our side, to send letter for the because in, you know that I think it impacts a lot. You know, maybe hope in next indicators in the next few years, you know, it can be that we are hard afraid of. I don't know, you see Claudia, Anna, Anna's 
for me to formulate these ideas in English is still quite hard. Sorry, if you would like to try. Okay, Ana, would you like to say something? Manus? <laughs> Sorry, but I can't uh, listen very well. The question is about the the public policies. I don't know about the current political situation. So the ch the changes that happened uh, last week in the Congress. Um, Chloe Fletcher in the room just asked it, um, how how this will impact your work, and so Hakel just wondered if any of you would like to add anything to the response. Yes, uh, I think that the moment here in Brazil, uh, in the same time that we are in a positive pathway because the elections of Lula and the creation of the Indigenous Peoples Ministry and the strengthening of the Environmental uh, Ministry, now we are... Um, during a hard process of the attacks from the uh, National Congress that are uh, approved, uh, approved some measures that uh, try to uh, uh, put down the indigenous, uh, indigenous people ministry and the environment ministry too. Uh, today, we, ha we um, have an important um, uh, bill to be uh, voting in the National Congress that um, uh, try to uh, take out the indigenous people rights related to the, the mark, demarcation and regularization of indigenous lands. And uh, this uh, bill uh, also can open these lands to uh, uh, economic activities and uh, also it can um, uh, put in check indigenous land that already was uh, regularized. So today it is an important day and uh, indigenous people are mobilized to resist against this uh, attack. So it is difficult to, to have a prospection because uh, in the same time, we have a good agenda by the executive power, but the legislative power, the National Congress is totally against this uh, agenda. So, uh, and in this moment, we are uh, seeing that how is important to uh, have a good Congress, and sometimes the power of the Congress is made uh, higher than executive power and the ministers. So uh, we hope that the, the promised public policies uh, that are uh, being developing uh, can uh, can uh, will be developed. But uh, we need to resist all the time because uh, the, the, there are several actors here fighting by these uh, competi competi uh, strategies in competitions like uh, Claudia uh, presented for us. So in the same time, uh, we have the ruralist group, the farmers that are uh, putting uh, pressure uh, over the environment, indigenous people, and uh, it, it is very difficult to, to apply uh, the policies concretely. So we have hope that the things will be better in the next years, but the pressure is constant. So uh, I think that we need to uh, keep the pressure too, uh, fighting against these uh initiatives and uh, measures over uh that these actors yeah I, I just would like to add thank at first thanks so much Anna you could uh, um consolidate what you know we think about it yes but people when Lula um 
became president again. Many, many, many people from here, people from other countries, people from Brazil too, start to ask me what I think. Oh, now Lula, you know, is the power again, the things will be better. And I just answered, I'm happy about it, but the Congress is still. Yes. We, so I still worry about what will happen in Brazil in the next four years because we still have people like ruralists in the power, many, many of them. So yes. that's the message keep the pressure and stay in alert all the time, try to do what we can do as a scientist, as a Brazilian. That's it. Yes, perfect. Thank you so much. Um, any final questions, thoughts? Okay. Well, I'd like to thank our speakers very much for a wonderful talk. Thank you. And yeah, look, but we will be organizing another seminar next week. So hope to see you then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.